Okay, let's talk about the ASVAB exam. And specifically, we're going to be talking about some of the mathematics that you uh, very well could face on ASVAB. And uh, we're going to take a look at a particular practice problem. Now, a little bit about myself before we get going. Uh, my background is I'm a math teacher, taught middle school math, high school math, and beyond. But I'm also a veteran. Uh, I was in, uh, in the Marine Corps. I was enlisted in the Marine Corps. So many, many years ago, I had to take uh, the ASVAB as well. And I also later um, became a Navy officer, uh, surface warfare officer. So, you know, I've been in the service uh, for many years. So I know what it's like to... Um, uh, take exams, especially the ASVAB. It's a critical exam. Um, and even though there's not, let's say, the kind of math that you might be doing uh, like on a high school math test per se, and today's high tech military, the type of jobs are out there, um, you know, you really, you know, if you're going for something pretty technical, you want to get the best abs. As VAP scores as possible, and by the way, uh, that's just general advice to anybody going in, in the military these days. You want to get the best scores possible because later down the line, whether you're going to re-enlist or you may want to go to another MOS or maybe try to get into an officer's program, your ASVAP scores are going to follow you. So you really do um, want to put all the effort into studying. Uh, to prepare for the ASVAB. Now, the ASVAB, the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery, you know, it's not a direct test on all your skills like reading, writing, etc. I mean, the, the problems are structured in creative ways, but you do need to have, you know, good analytical abilities to do well on this exam. Okay, and math is a critical part of it. So the more math you know, the better off you're going to be. Okay. Uh, before we get into this little problem, I want to let you know that I actually have an ASVAB math prep course. I'm going to leave the link in the description of this video, so that might be something you want to check out. But let's take a look at this problem here. And if you want to use a calculator to help you out, uh, feel free to do so. But let me uh, share with you the problem, and then obviously I'm going to go through and solve it. Okay, so here I have a, a simple formula, okay, uh, in mathematics. Uh, speak, we would call this a function. So let's say f is equal to x to the negative n power. So what I want you to do is to evaluate, uh, which means kind of plug in, okay, uh, these values for the respective variables. So I want, to, I want you to evaluate, figure out what this is equal to when we let x equal to negative 2 and n is equal to negative 3, or sorry, n equal to 3, okay. So Evaluate means plug in the values, replace the variables in this expression with these values, and then simplify down to one number. And if you want to uh, use your calculator to help you out, uh, go ahead and do so. And if you want to pause the video and give it a quick try before I go through it, that might be a good idea as well. Okay, so let's get to it. So f is going to be equal to x to the negative n power, but I'm saying x is going to be equal to 2. So I'm going to put a 2 here. And n, this little n up here, is 3. So this is going to be a negative 3. Okay, so basically we want to be looking at this expression here. f is equal to 2 to the negative third power. So before I get to this negative third power part, let me just ask you here, what is 2 to the third power? Okay, what is 2 to the third power? You should know this. Okay, hopefully you were saying, oh, okay, 2 to the third power means take 2 and multiply it by itself three times. So that's 2 times 2 times 2, and that is equal to 8. So you don't need a calculator to solve that. But when we throw in this negative part, a lot of people get confused with this right away. So let's go ahead and uh, address this. Okay, so the negative uh, number here, now by the way, before I get uh, give you a full explanation on this, you could have gone into your calculator and figured out what 2 to the negative third power is. So this is kind of a little pop quiz if you're able to use your calculator. I don't know if you have a scientific calculator uh, uh, in front of you, but you would have to have used this key or this key or this key here. And I don't want to deviate too much uh, into it, but this is how we take uh, powers and exponents. Um, uh, on a scientific calculator. If you had your cell phone, you probably you could. There is a scientific calculator uh, function on most, um, and like app that you could you can use on your cell phone. But I, I don't want to digress too much. If you didn't understand how to do this on your on your calculator, no big deal. Let's get back to just uh, the principles of this problem. So we have two to the negative third power. Now I know two uh, to the third power means this, but 
this negative three, how do I handle that? Well, all we need to understand is we're, when we're uh, dealing with powers and exponents, this negative three, I can, I can get rid of this negative by putting this under a fraction. So uh, right now I have two to the negative three, and really this is just over one. If I say, write the number five as a fraction, you'll be like, well, I don't see the other, I don't see a numerator and a de denominator. You're like, I don't, I don't see it. Well, you can always make any number into a fraction by just putting it over one. Because five divided by one is what, just five, right? So when you want to think of a, a, of a number as a fraction, just put it over one, and now I have my numerator and denominator. So if I want to think of two to the negative third power as a fraction temporarily, I could just put it over one, okay? So let me go ahead, let me actually uh, do it down here, then we'll get to the final answer. So we have two to the negative third, I want to think of this temporarily as a fraction over 1. And now what I want to do is get rid of this negative 3 because I want to think of this as 2 cubed because I know how to figure out the answer. So one of the uh, cool things about powers and exponents is that I could take this whole thing here and I can move it down underneath the fraction. And when I do that, I'm going to be left with the 1 at uh, uh, in the numerator. But when I move it down underneath the fraction here, uh, what I'm what I'm going to have is two cubed. You see, anytime you have uh, you move a power and an exponent to one side of the fraction or the other, you just change the sign of this little number that's called the exponent. So two cubed uh, is uh, a, one over two cubed is equivalent to two to the negative third over one. Now let's say I had one over two to the negative seven. Well, let's say I don't want to look at it that way. I could just move this guy upstairs. So now this becomes, here, let me do it this way. Uh, this becomes two to the positive seven. So I can move this whole power and exponent to one side of the fraction or the other. But when I do that, I just gotta change the sign to positive to negative or negative to positive, okay? So that's really important to understand because now let's go back to our problem. I'm like, okay, two to the negative three, I wanna, I, you know, I don't know what that is exactly. I know two cubed is eight. So I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna think of this as two to the negative three over one. But now I'm gonna move this guy underneath the fraction. So this becomes two cubed over one. Okay, when you move it, you're like, there's nothing there. It's, there's always a one as a placeholder. So now this becomes one over two cubed. Again, we know what um, two cubed is, that's eight. So this is just one over eight. Now, obviously you can go into your calculator and get yourself a nice little decimal. So let's do that here. One divided by eight is the same thing as 0.125. So if you got this answer or this answer, you are correct. So um, some of you out there might be thinking, well, yeah, this is more like algebra. You know, I'm not gonna be doing algebra. I'm gonna be in the infantry or artillery. Yeah, you know, you're, 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 you're selling yourself um, short, number one, like, hey, you don't know how to work with formulas, you'll be surprised in artillery or in infantry, you're dealing with uh, math concepts, okay? And um, uh, the more math you know, the better off you're going to be. And, you know, again, take it, for, take it from people who've been in the military for a long time. You do well in your ed education is critical. This is a high-tech military. You know, they're looking for people who can learn. And just because you get to the ASVAB, that's not gonna be, that's just the first of many and several exams that you're gonna be taking throughout the service. So anyways, hopefully uh, this uh, video found you, uh, found you well, you know, and inspired you to kind of up your math game. Now, math isn't the only subject. Obviously, science and everything else, your entire, you know, education is important. So. Um, you know, if you're still in high school right now, you know, definitely take all your high school classes important. All that stuff's going to help you out. But again, I'm going to go ahead and leave a link in the description of this video to my ASVAB math prep course if you want to check that out. And also, there's I have literally hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel that are, uh, can really benef benefit you in preparing for the ASVAB as well. So hopefully you'll consider subscribing. If you like this video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And leave me some feedback. What service are you going into? Um, I really think the U.S. military today, I mean, it's always been a great opportunity. You know, it really it comes down to what you're going to make of it. Okay. And the ASVAB uh, is your, really your, your first, um, 
you know, challenge going into the military. It's like, hey, do the best you can on the ASVAB because you, it gives you, up, uh, gives you the most options in terms of MOS uh, selection. All right, because you might think, you know, I want to do this thing. Then you, you, know, you take the ASVAB, you get great scores, and the recruiter says, well, listen, you actually qualified for X, Y, and Z. You may be changing your mind, okay? So just because you're interested in one thing doesn't mean you may not be, become interested later on in something else. So give yourself as much opportunity as possible. Well, with that being said, I definitely want to uh, wish you all the best and thank you uh, for being one of those few people that, you know, raise their hand and go in into the military um, and, you know, serve our, our great country and protect it. So I wish you all the best with that and thank you for your time. Have a great day.